Baby, we 35. Where is we going? To work. What's up, beauties? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Sonya, and you're tuned in to my first video back in four months, babes. So months, babes. <laughs> so if you're interested in catching up with me on where I've been and what I've been up to, let's get into the video. Okay, I got my phone, and y'all know whenever I have my phone, I got notes, okay? So let's get into it. This is gonna be a very just like laid back casual video of me just catching you guys up on um where i've been what i've been doing and where i am now as far as mental health spiritual health and content creation all of the things so i'm just gonna jump right into it because i done been away for four months so i'm pretty sure y'all ready to catch up back in june i took an unexpected break from social media um, if y'all follow me on Instagram, then y'all have seen me talk about this already. Um, it was a very unexpected break because I was in the middle of planning a lot of things, doing the style coaching, planning our trip to Mexico, just a lot of things I had going on. Taking a fast from social media is not something that is new to me. I do it quite often, as y'all know. But I feel like this time it was more than just a fast. I really felt like God was calling me to go on a sabbatical and if you don't know what a sabbatical is you know it's directly tied to the word sabbath sabbath day you know so a sabbatical is actually like a prolonged break from work like it is just a prolonged break that allows you to focus on your personal growth um study travel whatever that may look like i was commanded by the lord to go on a sabbatical and i will say for the sake of this video I'm not going to get too, too detailed into um, every single thing that I have learned spiritually in these past four months because I already did that on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you follow me at simplysonya underscore M. I went live when I first came back on social media for my birthday and I really kind of did like an in-depth like month to month like these are the things that i've been walking through with christ from june all the way to september so if you want to check that out i will put the link in the description box below and i'll also pin it to the comments so that you can like have a uh if you want to outline of what the lord been saying to me over the four months that's the video you want to watch but for this video i'm just going to kind of give you like the overall arching theme so at the time that I took a sabbatical from social media, mentally, I was not in, um, I was not in the worst place that I've ever been, uh, but I wasn't also in the place that I am now. So it wasn't the worst place, but now that I've witnessed one of the best places that I've been in in my mental, well really the best place that I've been in in my mental spiritual health, I know that four months ago, I wasn't in the best of places um and i didn't realize that at the time but now i do in my life at the time what i realized now is i was wrestling with a lot of idolatry um a lot of comparison a lot of just fomo jealousy envy um about you know where i wanted my life to be going where i thought my life should have been taking uh you know what i thought should have been taking place in my life at that time and like versus what's actually happening right now and a lot of people go through that when you're walking spiritually with christ that can really hinder your ability to just trust the lord to live and live freely um to be content and to all just be at peace honestly and truly and that was the biggest thing um i was always hustling trying to get there and trying to get there does not allow you to really rest in God's peace that surpasses all understanding. And from the beginning of this year, from the tip top beginning of this year, God had been telling me, I need you to prioritize prayer, fasting, and the Sabbath. And um, that really took a root theme in me prioritizing rest in my life. Um, before these past four months, well, before this year, actually, I have worked seven days a week 
for the past four years. A lot of y'all forget that I still work a full-time job Monday through Friday. And the type of job that I work full-time does cause you to sometimes have to work in the evenings and sometimes have to work on the weekends and i try to manage that to the best of my abilities but then you throw in creating content consistently on top of that your girl was working seven days a week so i was not practicing the sabbath and i honestly had to tell god like i don't i don't know how to rest which is a common theme amongst black women a common theme amongst women in general but especially women of color we are very high functioning high achieving but what that usually means is we're not generally healthy mentally spiritually and sometimes physically um we're you know we have this culture where we're striving to get somewhere and we are not taking care of ourselves in the process and we're being disobedient to the way god actually says that we should live our lives the sabbath is not a suggestion it's a command the sabbath day didn't go away with jesus dying on the cross so those are things that i've been learning throughout the year and learning how to implement in my life and it's been a struggle honestly and truly but these past four months have allowed me to rest in a way that i haven't rested in the last 10 years I have been telling God and people that God has done more in my life mentally, spiritually, and physically in the past four months than I have been able to do in the past 10 years. And so these last four months, as, as you'll hear me outline in that Instagram live, have really just been focused on me um, casting down idols in my life. Um, casting down certain expectations that God never promised me, casting down any and everything that I have exalted above God and putting him back on the center of my heart, basically falling back in love with my first love, which is Christ. Um, and so I have really been focused on that and it has been all things challenging eye-opening scary yet the best most fulfilling most purposeful time that i think i have spent with just god and i alone in a very long time so these past four months away have been amazing and at the same time they've been challenging um and so i am in therapy for things like anxiety for things like uh work-based faith for things like perfectionism and for things like performance-based belief, work-based faith, things like that. And so I've been in therapy for maybe a month or so now and I'm still feeling my way around it, um, but it's been a really helpful. Um, I have learned that I have suffered and been functioning with anxiety since I was a kid. And so some of the things that I am putting into practice is God-centered meditation, breathing techniques, grounding techniques, things like that, working out physical activity that can really help promote my mental and spiritual health. And so it's been all things wonderful as it comes to personal growth and self-growth um, and maturity in Christ, but it has not been an easy journey. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. If y'all ever have had to do this before in your life, which most of you have, and if you haven't, keep living, sis, because you will. Um, you know, allowing God to redeem your spirit and recondition your heart, your brain, the way you think, the way you live, um, it isn't easy. And sometimes he does things like that, where it's just like he redeems you like that and you don't deal or suffer or wrestle with things anymore. And sometimes it's more of a process. And I have experienced in these last four months, both of those things where like, I feel I really feel like my idolatry that I was putting into my social media career, my being an influencer, that job leading me into living a certain lifestyle, so on and so forth. Like I really do feel like I got delivered from that, like that when I finally surrendered, which that won't easy either. Finally surrendering my plan of how I thought things were gonna go or even like my expectations of how I was thinking things should go was not easy. Okay, y'all please go watch that Instagram live because I really talk about this, this encounter that I had with God that pivoted me into that. 
that wasn't easy but once i did surrender the way god really moved in my heart and my mind to take that idol away and also replace that with something better which is himself and a better plan has been beautiful and then this other thing with um you know teaching my with teaching myself about emotional regulation expectation regulation regulating disappointments and how to suffer for christ well that's taking a little bit more time okay that's a little, that's a little bit more of a process but overall god has done an amazing job with redeeming my spirit um where i was versus where i am now when it comes to how i approach my faith and how i approach belief for my future and the plans for my life he is done a great work and still doing a good work because he is faithful to complete his work in you to the coming of jesus christ and i am living that out right now and so these past four months away have really been focusing on that um you know i feel like with all the projects and assignments that i had going on prior to these last four months my number one assignment right now is me and jesus me and the lord <laughs> that's my number one assignment i don't have the coaching the the coaching program the the mexico trip all the other stuff that i was planning i literally told god once i finally surrendered my plans to him i was like hey put all of this in the fire okay purify it all okay and whatever burns up in the fire burns up and whatever you give back to me <laughs> are the things that i will keep as the desires that you have for my heart um and i've been living that out and we've been working that out let's see y'all know i just recently turned 35 on september 25th thank you guys so much for all the birthday wishes turning 35 has been what i think everybody expects turning 30 to be y'all like okay <laughs> a lot of y'all don't realize that i'm 35 i'm 35 okay and i'm i'm enjoying it but that whole like life awakening moment when you turn 30 it was like oh i'm out of my 20s like i didn't really have that back in 2019 when i turned 30 because there was a lot of there was a lot of unfortunate things going on in my life at that time so i didn't have like this awakening this this like moment of maturity like i'm i'm in adulthood for a long time i've like i ain't child i've been tripped out that i'm even 30 something okay like it is crazy to me that i am in my 30s <laughs> in mid 30s now um but turning 35 has been exactly what i would expect somebody coming out of their 20s would feel when they turn 30. and what i mean by that is just like that moment where you're like oh i'm mature now like now i'm an adult though like now i'm grown baby i am this is it i'm 30 freaking five bruh it is it is mind-boggling turning 35 was a moment of um reflection it it has been a rebirth I have literally been seeing my birthday on the clock all year, 925. Talk a lot more spiritually about how God communicates with me on my Instagram stories. And one of the things that he does is he shows me certain numbers on the clock over and over again. And those numbers will point me to scriptures and the things that he he wants me to know. Um, it's, it's one of the most frequent ways that he speaks to me. And so for the longest, I've been seeing nine. 25 9 11 and 9 19 and um 11 has represented rest for me and you know psalm i think it's psalm 91 is really the psalm that i have really been associating um or thinking of when i see 9 11 on the clock it's you know being in his refuge and his rest 9 19 and 9 2 5 have represented for me this this concept of rebirth and god being faithful to keep his promises to me um and so 925 when you look at i think it's matthew i'll put it on the screen the right the right book in the new testament but i think it's matthew 
um, in chapter 9, it starts talking about the woman who bled for 12 years and then the 12-year-old little girl who died that got brought back to, to life. And both of those stories represent like this rebirth or this newness of life for both both women, right? So the woman who was bleeding for 12 years, she touches the hem of his garment. She instantly, um, the blood instantly goes away. She's instantly healed. And that represents a, a form of rebirth because now she can live out her life. She doesn't have to be in hiding anymore. Now she's considered pure because she's not bleeding all the time. And then the little girl actually did that and was brought back to life. <laughs> and so it is, it is two stories of rebirth. And so I definitely feel like turning 35 has been a rebirthing for Sonya. Um, just coming out of all the unhealthy, toxic ways of thinking, all the legalism that I was suffering from, just all these skewed ways of thinking about God and faith and life and other people and myself. It has been a process of rebirth for me. So. Coming into to 35, I really wanted to celebrate my birthday calm. Um, I started kind of like dibbling and dabbling back into social media, just seeing how I felt about that. And really wanting to just take things slow and be in the moment. A lot of times when you are wrapped up in social media, it really robs you of being in the moment. And that was one of the things that I really struggled with the most was just being in the moment, being content with where I am today and being grateful, truly grateful to my core about the blessings and God, the, the blessings and the prayers that God have already answered instead of being so hyper focused on what's next, what's next, what's next. And so me and Kristen got an Airbnb shout out to her mom for getting us the Airbnb for our birthdays because Kristen also turned 35, we're seven days apart. Um, and so me and my bestie, Went to the Outer Banks to this beautiful Airbnb, had a wonderful time there, created a lot of content there, so I will definitely be posting that. Um, I didn't vlog, but I did a lot of like short form content and just really enjoyed our 35th birthdays in peace in a beautiful home at the Outer Banks, which is actually very stunning, and just did it in a way that is like affordable luxury peaceful with people you love and care about and the lord and jesus and that was probably hands down has been my best birthday ever honestly and truly so turning 35 has been a beautiful beautiful journey i'm still getting used to it honestly within my walk with god right now i really believe that he gave me new wine skins and is filling me up with new wine and i'm just getting used to it like there's sometimes where i like and in my body and I'm like, oh, like uh, I got to move around a little bit. Like I'm trying to get used to like the newness, <laughs> the newness and my, my flesh, my old ways will definitely fight back against that from time to time. And so it is absolutely a journey to like get adjusted to the newness and, and really live out the newness that Christ is giving me. Um, but overall it has been worth all the all the things, all the growing pains, it has been worth it. So now that you know about where I've been for the last four months, my spiritual growth and turning 35, let's talk about like what all that means for social media, my presence online, so on and so forth. So, I ain't going nowhere, girl. I'ma still be here, okay? I'ma still be here. I definitely had that moment where I was thinking like, oh shoot, like, <laughs> Does God want me to like not be on social media at all anymore? Like what's gonna happen with all of the things? Um, but God is so kind. He's so kind and please understand that whatever kindness he does for me when it comes to these social media platforms That's a kindness to you all too because he could have told me to delete all this stuff and go on about my life Okay, <laughs> but he didn't I really appreciate that so, um, yes, I will still be on social media, but the way that I'm approaching social, social media is going to be absolutely different um, as far as I know. And, and these are things that I'm still figuring out with Christ, right? I definitely don't have it all figured out. We are, I'm, he's piece by piecing me the plan or, or the perspective or whatever he's giving me is coming piece by piece. And so I'll know as I go along, okay? <laughs> But um, the biggest thing that I don't want to do anymore when it comes to social media is be so fixated on 
a brand. And when I say a brand, I mean my brand and other brands. <laughs> like I, that was such a stressful time with trying to have a brand and have everything be a business and then have, um, you know, a part of my business be working with other businesses. And that doesn't mean that you won't see me working with brands anymore. I actually, I absolutely still want to do that, but I'm not going to be so hyper focused on it the way that I was before. I want to approach social media the way that I approached it when I first started my channel in 2017. September marked seven years that I've been on YouTube. Shout out to me, okay? Um, and shout out to y'all for rocking with me for seven whole years. Amen? Okay. Um, but when I first started my channel, it was just fun. <laughs> it was just something to do. It was me and my friends being us. I say this all the time. My channel started out as a vlog channel way before I started doing fashion, way before I started doing Transformation Tuesday, way before I started doing Ghetto Bible Study, any type of Christian content. I was just vlogging what we what we had going on when we was in our sin sinful days. I was just I was just vlogging. Okay, we were young. We were still turning up. We were going. We were traveling with a little bit of money that we had, and I just was putting us on camera. Um, and I don't miss my life back then, but I do miss the way that I would approach social media. It wasn't so strategic. It was just me creating, and I just miss creating. I just miss creating and so I am less worried about my platforms looking like a brand and something to market I'm less worried about like oh is this brand gonna like me is this brand gonna reach out to me is this brand gonna do like when God allows it great you know when I'm able to make money off of it great um but I just want to give y'all beautiful art when it comes to my fashion, when it comes to the way I live in my life now, like there are certain things that God has shown me, like new interests that I'm interested in that God has shown me and then reminded me of old things that I was interested in that I'm trying to incorporate back in my life. So like as a kid, I grew up drawing and I'm trying to get back into drawing a lot. Um, I'm, I'm falling in love with architecture and home decor. Y'all know this condo is, is on the struggle bus when it comes to home decor. But I'm praying that we can get into some of that. And then also like my aesthetic and my style uh, turning 35 is changing. And I've been talking about this earlier in the year about how my style is changing. And I finally feel like I'm I'm getting to a point where I know exactly what that is. And so I want to just lean into that because it's fun. It's an outlet. And it really represents the large creative part that God has blessed me um, to have. And so that's gonna be my approach online from now forward on this channel. You're still gonna get fashion. Um, but I do wanna start incorporating like some home decor type stuff, some more aesthetic -y type stuff because that just really brings me peace. <laughs> I really want my channel to be a peaceful outlet for myself and for y'all. Like I, I really want to lean into content that brings a sense of peacefulness. Um, it feels like home. It feels like something that you can obtain and acquire for yourself. It's not so commercially and like branded it's just like Saya out here living her life and she's sharing it online like that's what i really want to get back um too and so that's what i'm going to be focusing on and so you're definitely going to see like more of a refined fashion style when it comes to where i'm at now at 35 child i don't necessarily want to have all the stuff hanging out no more you know, like I am loving the modest trend because the girls are learning to be modest and stylish. And so my biggest thing is to be more refined and elegant. I'm still a glam girl at the end of the day. And I, I don't think I'll ever be like so, so covered up where it's just like, okay, okay, girl. <laughs> You're looking like a peel girl, okay? <laughs> but I, I definitely want to find different ways to play with um, clothing and layering that still come off as glam and sexy, but more refined and elegant. The, the, the stuff that's trending right now, even though it's a trend, that's, that's really, 
really my fashion style for real so like the vest and the wide leg pants the blazers the pinstripes this like sweater that i have going on. i've been wearing a lot of like creams and blacks and tans and things like that still green because i ain't gonna never give up green but i'm just learning how like you know burgundy is trending right now and those are things that i've always loved and so I'm just, I'm really like refining my style and the best way that I can put it is like if Princess Diana was still alive right now, I would be, I, I want to dress like her. Like her, her casual style, her, you know what I'm saying? All of that. Like I used to think like Regine off of Living Single was my style inspo, but really when I go back and watch the show, it's really Maxine Shaw, attorney at law. Baby, Maxine was going to give you a nasty monochromatic business suit. Bust down. Even her casual looks. So that's really like kind of where I've been coming into. So you guys will definitely be seeing more content around that. And again, I know that style is really trendy right now. So you're kind of seeing it everywhere. But when I think about it, like that's, that's really how I want to dress all the time. Incorporate different colors, incorporate different textures, different layers, things like that. But yeah, so I'm actually really ready for the fall so I can play around with things in my closet. Um, hit up some of the stores to see what's in there and just kind of share that experience of refining my style with you all because I know a lot of women are going through that. We all have gotten tired of looking like we going to the club all the time. Baby, we're 35. Where is we going? To work and to church. Okay. So you will definitely see more YouTube videos and YouTube shorts about things like that and me discovering that. And again, I don't have no plans. I ain't got no video ideas We're all written out. We, I'm discovering this as I go. Um, and also my consistency on YouTube is gonna take like a slow, a slow time to get back up there. I'm not gonna come on here and promise y'all no upload schedule because I'm, I'm still filling things out. Okay. And the last thing that I want to mention when it comes to social media about me just living our life, me and my bestie have created a TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, make sure you follow us at Chaotically Grown. Yes, that's our TikTok name, Chaotically Grown. <laughs> it's so fitting, okay? We have basically transformed my TikTok, my Simply Science TikTok, into our TikTok. So you'll still see some of my old fashion content up there, but you're gonna start seeing me and Kristen more. Um, Kristen has been in her fashion bag, baby. Okay, she's been in her fashion bag. So I'm trying to get her in front of the camera more. And again, if you follow me on other platforms, you know me and Kristen spend a lot of time going on girls trip, girls dates, and we just wanna share that with y'all because a lot of y'all admire our relationship, which we absolutely love. Um, and we just want to share that with y'all. We want to share our silliness, our funniness. And again, like I said, getting back to what it was when, when I first created my channel back in 2017. It was me, Kristen, and her husband, my brother Michael. And we was just living our best life at the time. <laughs> so we want to get back to that. Um, definitely sharing fashion content, um, bestie fashion content with you guys. Sharing our bestie dates where we go out to eat when we go on our trips so on and so forth so make sure you follow us on tiktok because we're going to be navigating this chaotic life together with christ now that we're 35 baby turning 35 is something okay it's it's really something i'm enjoying it and also it does something to you i don't know it does something <laughs> so that's basically where i've been and it's basically where i am now so just that on it babes um, I, I really want to extend a huge thank you for all of y'all support. Um, so many of y'all reached out to me within the last four months saying prayers for me, encouraging me, and those things did not go unnoticed at all. Thank y'all for continuing to binge my YouTube videos. <laughs> Continuing to watch my YouTube videos while I was away. Um, I didn't lose followers. I actually have gained a few. So shout out to y'all. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Um, and so I'm just excited to go on this journey with y'all. Y'all, we growing up. Spiritually, we growing up. And I'm excited about what God is going to continue to do in my life. I know a lot of people are at were asking like, oh, is ghetto Bible study going to come back? Are you going to start talking about the word of God and teaching the word of God in some capacity the way you used to. Um, I don't know. I, I, I would assume that God would continue that on in my life. And, and I'm, I'm sure he's going to tell me how to incorporate it and in what I'm already doing now, even if it's 
just sit down videos like this where I'm just updating y'all on things. Um, but Ghetto Bible Study has been laid to rest. She served her time. Um, but like I said, my assignment right now is, is he and I's relationship. But I absolutely do believe that at some point, um, teaching the word of God will, will come back on my platforms in some sort of way. So stay tuned, girl. Wow. I got the same questions as y'all, baby, okay? So make sure you're turning on your post notifications because I have been uploading YouTube shorts so you don't miss out on that. And YouTube videos back to come. I love y'all. I really do. I appreciate y'all. I hope y'all see the growth in me. My biggest compliment is when y'all tell me y'all see God in me. Pfft. Hey, that's a huge compliment. Um, yeah, and I'm just looking forward to being back online and being back with y'all. So... Until our next video, love you beauties. Bye.